As the pandemic continues to grip the world, rising tensions between the US and China on the origin of the novel coronavirus. Each blames the other. A Wuhan woman is seeking medical help on social media. She told us she's infected with coronavirus, but hospitals wouldn't diagnose her and refuse to give treatment. China's economy has suffered a record slump in the first two months of the year amidst the pandemic. So what do the numbers mean? And the first people to receive an experimental coronavirus vaccine speak about their motivations to join, despite the potential dangers of a new drug. And New York's mayor says he's strongly considering a shelter-in-place order for all city residents in an effort to curb the city's over 800 coronavirus cases. Welcome to China In Focus. I'm your host, Tiffany Meyer. As the world battles the coronavirus, a different kind of war is going on, a war of names. For the first time, President Trump used the name Chinese virus in a tweet, and a spokesman for the Chinese foreign ministry, Geng Shuang, is not happy. He called it a stigma against China, saying the Chinese regime strongly opposes it. This comes amid mounting evidence the Chinese regime is trying to change the narrative. When Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Zhao Lijian posted a video claiming the virus did not originate in China, but rather was brought in by the U.S. military. Four Republican senators have called on the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, to stop spreading disinformation about the origins of the coronavirus outbreak. A joint statement by Senators Jim Risch, John Barrasso, Marco Rubio and Cory Gardner on March 16th said, quote, the false information being spread by CCP officials as well as medical professionals linked to the CCP and state-controlled media outlets is irresponsible and dangerous to global public health. They call for China to join the international community to combat the global pandemic. Many overseas Chinese students rely on the news from the mainland, but some reports are standing out. A post titled, The Epidemic Situation in a Certain Country Has Been Out of Control, is spreading widely across Chinese chat platforms and calling overseas Chinese students to return. But the post has a pattern. The same post can be seen spreading across many platforms, but with a slight change. The name of the country changes, like Japan, the U.S., France, Canada, etc. Otherwise, the post reads as follows. Quote, the epidemic situation in that country has been out of control. I heard from my friends at the hospital. Numerous people ask for consultation every day. But there are no tests, so they send the patients home. There are many elderly people in that country, and countless patients died at home by themselves. It is not an illness without confirmed diagnosis, so that country has maintained such a low official growth rate, which is terrible. I have already booked a return flight ticket. The same version of the post substitutes all major world powers but China. In fact, some posts even claim the out-of-control areas extended to other planets, such as the Moon, Mars, the Milky Way, and the Solar System. Despite these seemingly outlandish claims, footage has appeared online of many students returning to the mainland. Major airports, such as in Beijing, are congested. People on the internet, meanwhile, pointed out the narrative sounds a lot like China's propaganda, which continuously emphasizes zero new cases. The Chinese Communist Party tries to blame the U.S. for the coronavirus through social media. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo called out China's top foreign affairs official over the Chinese regime's efforts to shift the blame for the coronavirus pandemic. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo raised strong U.S. objections to Beijing after a top Chinese official promoted a conspiracy theory about the origin of the virus. According to a statement from the State Department, Pompeo called China's top foreign affairs official on March 16th. Pompeo labeled the conspiracy theory an outlandish rumor and said Beijing was spreading disinformation. A Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson on Twitter last week accused the U.S. Army of introducing the virus to Wuhan. He wrote in both Chinese and English. A State Department spokesperson said the Chinese regime and state media had shifted focus away from the Wuhan Huanan market since mid-January. President Trump last week spoke of his conversations with the Chinese regime's leader, Xi Jinping. He said that Beijing knew how the outbreak started. And they know where it came from. We all know where it came from. 
A U.S. State Department official summoned the Chinese ambassador to the U.S. on Friday following the Twitter post. Chinese affairs analyst Tang Yu said that Beijing's disinformation campaign serves to direct public anger in China away from the government. Beijing was criticized for initially attempting to censor Chinese doctors who sounded an alarm over the virus, some of whom later died after becoming infected. Chinese officials initially tied the outbreak to a seafood market in Wuhan, China. Many of those originally infected have recently visited the market, making it a common link and likely source of infection. President Trump on Monday called coronavirus Chinese virus after its country of origin for the first time instead of coronavirus or COVID-19. China is expelling journalists from New York Times, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal. Any journalist whose visa runs up before the end of the year will need to hand back their press card within the next 10 days. It also said the three media outlets plus Time Magazine and Voice of America to submit information about their staff, finances and property in China. I regret China's decision today to further foreclose the world's ability to conduct the free press, free press operations that, frankly, uh, would be really good for the Chinese people. Really good for the Chinese people in these incredibly challenging global times where more information, more transparency are what will save lives. The move comes after the State Department designated five Chinese state-run outlets as foreign missions. Mike Pompeo calling them propaganda organs of the Chinese Communist Party. Wall Street Journal CEO condemned the expulsion as an attack on freedom of the press. U.S. officials also criticized Beijing for cracking down on independent journalism, such as the disappearance of citizen journalists covering the coronavirus epidemic in Wuhan. A Wuhan woman tells us she is infected, but hospitals wouldn't confirm her diagnosis and refuse to give treatment. NTD's Hong Ning reports. In early January, Xiao Wei had already heard about a mysterious new pneumonia in her city, Wuhan. She recognized it as a serious disease which might spread like SARS. She guessed everything right except for one thing. I never thought that I could get infected. That's it. Things started going wrong for Wei in late January, the night she came back from a bar. First coughs, then shivers. We're using a pseudonym for Wei, and her voice has been distorted to protect her identity. At that time, I started feeling a bit congested in my chest. It felt as if something was pressing against my chest. I felt stuffiness. It was a little hard to breathe. Her situation worsened. Symptoms went from sore muscles, shivers, and pressure in her chest to difficulty breathing. Wei said she also had pain in her head, kidney, heart, and stomach. The Centers for Control and Disease Prevention lists chest pain and difficulty breathing as warning signs of coronavirus. Wei believes she is a coronavirus patient with mild symptoms, but she has been denied medical treatment for that because her test results came back negative. Wei suspects her test results were manipulated as part of a cover-up of the real infection numbers by Wuhan authorities. In a social media conversation, she said to her friend, In Wuhan, you can still get nucleic acid tests. But no matter how many times you test, the results always come back negative. Hers is not an isolated case. She said a friend tested positive for coronavirus in early February. That friend was then tested again multiple times, and her results all came back negative. She says she knows a girl with similar symptoms who was denied treatment in Shanghai. The hospital wouldn't give her nucleic acid testing or medical treatment. She tried several hospitals. The responses were the same. Desperate for treatment, Wei posted on social media platform Weibo looking for help. Chinese authorities say the nucleic acid tests are accurate only 50 percent of the time. Other alternatives include gene sequencing and blood tests, Wei wasn't given any of these options. A video said to come from a Wuhan doctor has been circulating on Chinese social media. The man in the video said he heard that two major hospitals in Wuhan had stopped giving out blood tests. He said blood tests are the better alternative for diagnosing coronavirus, but they've been halted for political reasons. Reporting by Hong Ning, NTD News, New York. 
China's economy suffered a record decline in the first two months of the year due to disruptions from the global pandemic, pointing to possibly the worst growth numbers in 50 years. NTD's Catherine Wen walks us through the numbers. According to Monday's release from China's National Bureau of Statistics, combining January and February, economy activities in China dropped sharply across all sectors. This as the deadly outbreak restricted travel, shuttered factories, and closed stores and restaurants. Manufacturing activities dropped 13.5 percent compared to the same period last year. According to Reuters, it's the steepest decline in three decades. Investment went down nearly a quarter, and as for consumer spending, retail sales fell one-fifth as consumers avoided crowded places like shopping malls and movie theaters. The hardest-hit sector? Restaurants, losing as much as 43 percent of sales during the first two months. The numbers were much worse than expected. Yet Chinese officials say they're still confident they will meet their growth target for 2020. Although no official target has been published yet, but analysts say recovery won't be easy. The unemployment rate also rose to a record high in February, up to 6.2 percent, and fear of the virus continues to keep factories from fully resuming production. Dutch bank ING cut its forecast of China's first quarter growth to 3.6 percent. That would be the weakest since at least the 1970s. Some others expect the first quarter growth to even go negative. Last Friday, China's central bank cut interest rates for the second time this year, releasing 550 billion yuan, that's 79 billion U.S. dollars, to save its economy. Catherine Wynn, NTD News. And now to an experimental coronavirus vaccine. The first people to receive a dose of it talk about their motivation to join the trial, despite the potential dangers of getting exposed to a new drug. The first people to roll up their sleeves for an experimental vaccine to fight the new coronavirus say they were inspired to help as they watched the pandemic sweep across the globe. You know, there's obviously a certain amount of nerves associated with it, you know, as any experimental trial is going to be. You know, I, I hope it works. I hope there is no crazy side effects. And, you know, I was debriefed pretty thoroughly before entering this of, what the possible risks were. The four study a, participants a got a jab in the arm on Monday as the first COVID-19 vaccine experiment got underway in Seattle. They said it was no more painful than a flu shot. They're part of a test that will ultimately give 45 healthy volunteers two doses a month apart. Fortunately, I'm, you know, in, in my current state of health, I don't have too much to worry about, but I know it is, it's not really about just me and you, it's about how this will affect the population as a whole. The Seattle experiment is one of several worldwide efforts to test potential COVID-19 vaccines. Even if the research goes well, experts say a vaccine wouldn't be available for widespread use for another 12 to 18 months. The government is also preparing to protect the elderly. Any of the 62 million on Medicare will now be able to see their doctor from home via video chat. Trump called the move a historic breakthrough before only people living in rural areas would be covered for telehealth services. But now all people who receive Medicare will be able to talk to their doctors from home. People receiving Medicare are 65 and older, the most vulnerable to the virus. Even if they aren't experiencing virus-like symptoms, getting care from home protects them from being unnecessarily exposed. Perhaps an elderly patient with diabetes needs a routine checkup. And this has nothing to do with the coronavirus. And so with our new telehealth benefits, this person who's not really, uh, who's at risk for the coronavirus doesn't have to venture outside their home. And Trump said they are lifting telehealth restrictions on the states. Again, we're working with the states and relying on the states. We have to. They are also temporarily relaxing privacy regulations, allowing doctors to use their own phones to talk with patients. Melina Weiskup, NTD News. And in New York City, Mayor Bill de Blasio says he's strongly considering a shelter-in-place order for all city residents, an effort to curb the city's over 800 coronavirus cases. I think New Yorkers should be prepared right now for the possibility of a shelter-in-place order. It has not happened yet, but it is definitely a possibility at this point. 
De Blasio says that New York could go into lockdown soon, adding that the decision should be made in the next 48 hours. New York City's five boroughs are home to over eight and a half million people. That's even more than San Francisco's seven million who are already under shutdown and are permitted outside only for essential reasons. The U.S. government may be about to send checks to Americans immediately to help them get ready for a potential coronavirus outbreak. It'd be part of a larger stimulus package to boost the economy. In an effort to cushion the economic blow of the virus on American workers, a top U.S. official said they're looking to send checks to them immediately. We're looking at sending checks to Americans immediately. And what we've heard from hardworking Americans, many companies have now shut down, whether it's bars or restaurants. Americans need cash now, and the president wants to get cash now. And I mean now in the next two weeks. Mnuchin did not give an amount of money, but right now they're rumored to be $1,000 checks. The Treasury Secretary also alluded to limiting them to people under a certain income. The measure is part of a broad stimulus package, and President Trump said it's going to be big. Uh, with this invisible enemy, we don't want airlines going out of business. We don't want people losing their jobs or not having money to live when they were doing very well just four weeks ago. So we're going big, and that's the way it'll be. After speaking with the Senate Republicans, Mnuchin said the package would inject $1 trillion into the economy. We've put a proposal on the table that would inject a $1 trillion into the economy. Now, let me just say, uh, this is a combination of loans. This is a combination of direct checks to individuals. This is a combination of creating liquidity for small businesses. Mnuchin said he expects bipartisan support for the stimulus package. Miguel Moreno, NTD News. And a bill that makes testing free for everyone in the U.S. was passed in the House last night. It also includes help for anyone impacted financially by the virus. Lawmakers initially passed the bill in the early hours of Saturday morning, but it was later brought back to the floor after Speaker Nancy Pelosi, House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, and Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin together outlined some technical corrections. The bill would ensure that workers can take paid sick or family leave, increase unemployment insurance, and guarantees that all Americans can get free diagnostic testing for the coronavirus. The updated version includes changes that would only give paid family and medical leave to parents whose children's care facilities or schools are shut down due to the virus. Language in the bill was also changed to clarify three other points. First, that mandated benefit given to employees cannot exceed the tax credit employers receive. Second, that tax credits fully reimburse employers for health care premiums for employees on leave due to the virus. And third, that employees at qualifying companies will receive 10 total days of paid sick leave, not 10 additional days. The Senate is expected to vote on both the original and revised versions on Tuesday. Joe Biden will look to build on his dominant lead in the Democratic presidential race today. But not all the delegates are up for grabs as one state postponed its primary due to concerns over the coronavirus outbreak. Four states were scheduled to vote for the Democratic nomination on Tuesday, but there's been a change to the plan. Ohio has postponed its presidential nominating election. Governor Mike DeWine said the public health emergency caused by the coronavirus makes it too dangerous. He first sought the approval of the courts to move the election, but Judge Richard Fry rejected the request. Secretary of State Frank LaRose then appealed the decision, and Tuesday morning the Supreme Court officially allowed the polls to be closed. The only thing that takes precedent over a free and fair election, the only thing, would be the health and safety of Ohioans. And that's exactly what the decision that the governor had to make tonight was. Ohio will continue to collect absentee ballots and hopes to hold the primary on June 2nd. Elections in Arizona, Florida and Illinois plan to go ahead, but with extra precautions, like moving polling places away from assisted living facilities. And more voters are casting their vote early. According to public opinion polls, former Vice President Joe Biden is the favorite to win all three states, plus Ohio, over rival Senator Bernie Sanders. There are 441 delegates at stake in Florida, Illinois and Arizona, and a sweep would make it increasingly unrealistic that Sanders could catch up. Meanwhile, other states, including Georgia, Louisiana, and Kentucky, also postponed primaries set for the coming months. And countries around the world are taking new measures to stop the spread of the virus as the number of infections increases.
European nations are enacting countrywide lockdowns following Canada blocking its borders to all but its own and U.S. citizens. Spain is already turning back cars at land borders as the death toll reaches near 500. They are only asking for identification, the national card, nothing else. They should test us for fever because in the end, it's a checkpoint, but just for identification. Spain's 47 million people have been under partial lockdown since Saturday night, allowed to leave their homes only to go to work, buy food or visit a pharmacy or hospital. Friedrich Mertz, one of the major potential candidates to succeed Angela Merkel as German Chancellor, is now infected with the coronavirus. Mertz on Tuesday told local media that he will remain home in quarantine until the end of next week. And soccer's 2020 European Championship has been postponed for 12 months. The competition was meant to take place in June and July this year, in 12 countries. But the coronavirus outbreak has those plans scrapped. It's the first time in the history of the European Championships that it will have been postponed. And India has also closed its principal tourist sites, including the Taj Mahal, after the nation's cases surged. Confirmed cases stand at 142 as of Tuesday evening. In Australia, Woolworths, one of the two major grocers on Tuesday, introduced an exclusive shopping hour for the elderly and those with disabilities. I've been coming up every day and for, oh, I can't remember the last time I was able to buy toilet roll on the shelves. Supermarkets in Australia have also imposed tighter purchase limits on certain items by the day as Aussies begin to stockpile goods. The European Union is asking its members to turn away foreigners who want to enter the bloc for the next 30 days. But many countries have already done more than this. They've blocked people from other EU countries too, something the EU is not happy about. The European Union is calling on member states to restrict incoming travel from foreigners to the continent for 30 days. It's asking for Britain and Ireland to join it in the effort, but... Within the EU's own borders, its members are putting up their own walls. Germany has closed its borders with France, Austria and Switzerland. Poland closed its border with Germany just a day prior. Huge lines of traffic and confusion. Unrestricted freedom of movement, a cornerstone of the European Union, is ending for now. The EU's leadership in Brussels is condemning the internal development. It says this isn't the best way forward and warns the border closings between its members may worsen fears of a food shortage or medical supplies. Without drastic action, cases could double every five or six days. Elsewhere in Europe, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, in a move reminiscent of World War II, is asking factories to stop pumping out whatever it is they sell and start making that specialized medical equipment instead, such as ventilators. At least one company's already said they're ready to answer the call, Rolls-Royce, although it's not yet clear what they might start making. Now is the time for everyone to stop non-essential contact with others. The British government is also looking into repurposing hotels as emergency hospitals if necessary. France is enduring its first day under total confinement. Following Italy's example, the country has adopted strict measures to fight the spread of the virus. Our France correspondent David Vives has the story. The trendy neighborhood of Les Marais in Paris is usually filled with people in cafes and restaurants during lunch hour. But the area was practically empty on Tuesday as the official 15-day confinement period began in France. From famous tourist sites like the Champs-Élysées to Paris City Hall Hôtel de Ville, the scene remains the same, a city full of empty streets. Restoration work has stopped at the Notre Dame Cathedral, as well as at the majority of businesses in the country. I've lived in Paris since 1974, and I never see something like this. So I think this evening I'll visit my neighbor and play a card game. But even this simple activity is now prohibited, according to Security Minister Christophe Castaner. To give you some examples, a family lunch, dinner with friends, a football game with friends, a game of cards, all of that which might not seem important normally is now forbidden, not just discouraged, but forbidden. People are strictly controlled on the streets unless they go out for a reason, like going to buy food exercising, walking the dog, or visiting an ill parent. They are arrested and fined around $50 for the first arrest and $170 if they are arrested again. People need to show a piece of paper like this as a proof they have a reason 
to go out. 100,000 police, including military police, are on patrol to put these controls in place. Only a few people are allowed outside, like taxis, whose priority is to provide free transportation to healthcare workers. Taxi driver Butayeb says he chose to work in order to help others. We can transport people. This morning I drove a nurse to the state council. We're not forced to be confined if we want. The strict measure is in order to help curb the spread of the virus, which so far has killed 175 and infected more than 7,700. Report by David Vivez, NTD News. Airlines across the globe are feeling the pain as travel demand withers because of the coronavirus outbreak. Several have scrapped flights and ditched financial forecasts. American Airlines plans to cut 75 percent of its international flights through May 6 and ground nearly all of its wide-body fleet. Chicago-based United Airlines said it would cut corporate officers' salaries by 50 percent and reduce flight capacity by about 50 percent in April and May. The company also expects deep capacity cuts into the summer travel period. Delta says it has seen net bookings fall by 25 percent to 30 percent and that it expects the situation to get worse. The airline is cutting its domestic capacity by 10 percent to 15 percent and international by 20 percent to 25 percent, freezing hiring, offering voluntary leave options to staff and looking at early retirement of older aircraft. Southwest Chief Executive Officer Gary Kelly is taking a 10 percent pay cut and was quoted in a media report as saying the carrier may ground airplanes and grant employees leaves of absence if conditions continue to deteriorate. According to the report, Southwest will also take other steps to reduce costs, such as freezing hiring for non-frontline workers. With a sizable amount of companies' employees working from home, a growing list of schools shifting instruction online, and panic and confusion setting in, scammers are finding new targets. Between 2013 and 2019, the FBI says nearly $150 million was paid out because of ransomware attacks. Working outside of your company or school's secured network could pose safety risks. Cybersecurity expert Laura Gell warns people to stay cautious about suspicious emails and website links. For example, clicking on a link that has malware. And it just encrypts all your data sort of instantly. So it basically locks up your computer system and turns it into kind of a brick until you pay a ransom. And there's, it'll give you a little note on your screen saying this is a ransomware attack and here's how much we want you to pay us in Bitcoin to this account and here's how you do it. She also warns against scammers impersonating government agencies, especially during a global pandemic, like a fake email from the Center for Disease Control supposedly trying to give health-related updates. Recent reports show that some hackers have even created malware-infested apps, which claim to track the coronavirus outbreak. One such app is called COVID-19 Tracker. Once downloaded, the person is forced to pay money, or the hacker threatens to erase all the device's data and leak your personal information. If you're looking for news, go look at, look for it affirmatively from a source you trust. Don't click on, you know, particularly scary looking links sent to you. She also says to look closely at email addresses that have typos like the number one replacing the letter L or number zero replacing an O. But with due diligence, we can avoid the risks and mitigate potential damage in this time of uncertainty. Melina Weiskup, NTD News, New York. Here at China in Focus, we bring you firsthand information from inside China. Don't forget to subscribe for the latest updates. <laughs>